Hi everyone! Welcome to the first episode of the Curious Cube. Wait, Isabella, where did we get that name from again? I'm just curious. Thanks for asking, Holden. We'll save that question for a future episode. Oh, sad. I really wanted to know. Uh, anyway, uh, we're your hosts. I'm Isabella. I'm a high school senior hailing from Austin, Texas. Uh, math is a really big part of my life. So I started with the AMC 8, then I moved on to the AMC, Amy, and so on and so forth, as well as Math Counts, Math Prize for Girls, and a lot more. Uh, I attended the Math Olympiad program, or MOP for short, in 2020, which is probably the best moment of my math career. Uh, that is also where I met these two. Uh, aside from math, I love writing, I like playing various video games, and listening to music. Sounds fun. I'm Holden, and I'm a college freshman currently at MIT, but I'm originally from Lyle, which is in Illinois, and I've done contests for around six years, probably. I started out my contest career with math counts, and almost made it to national TV, but didn't. And I also attended a summer math camp, the same one as Isabella, the one she was talking about. Uh, I attended that for four years, three <laughs> times as a student and once as an RA, which meant that I got to run the Discord server and all the social activities as well. Besides math, I also enjoy playing music, listening to music, and writing music. Wow, that sounds like a lot of music. Anyway, I'm Luke. I'm a high school senior from Euless, Texas, near Dallas. I've done math contests for a long, long time. Uh, some of my accomplishments include winning three gold medals at the IMO, that's the International Math Olympiad. Uh, being invited to MOP six times, and winning the National Math Counts contest twice, uh, among other things. Uh, I also enjoy crosswords, chess, and before the pandemic, singing in church choir. All right, so let's go. Let's talk about what's going to happen in this series. Uh, we're going to be talking about our various context experiences twice a month, and you can keep updated by checking the MAA website or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, furthermore, if you, the viewer, have any questions you've been wanting to ask, this is a great place to do so. Use the submission form at our website to send in your questions, and we'll respond to questions in future videos. We can't answer every question, however. For example, if you send in a question from your homework, or even your favorite AMC question, we won't do those, since you could just look up solutions yourself. However, feel free to ask generalizations or extensions of questions you have seen on contests, as well as you know, maybe, you know, questions about our contest experiences, maybe questions about some advanced math you are always curious about, or maybe mathemat mathematical hypotheticals that you are also wondering about in your free time. And, yeah. the looking up, and the looking up answers applies to the AMC problems, not to your homework. Do your homework yourself. Yeah, do your homework yourself. <laughs> I think that there's like a thing with academic dishonesty. Anyway, uh, so thank you to those who have already submitted questions to us, and we will be getting to a few of those today. Question one from Daniel. What are your experiences with math? How did you get to know competition math? And what age did you start competition math? I started contests in early elementary school. Uh, I started like, like late elementary school. Um, my school like introduced like math contests to like everyone and that's how I got into it. Yeah, out of the three of us, I'm pretty sure I started the latest at seventh grade. Though before seventh grade, I did learn a bit of math, like that was not contest related through Khan Academy. Um, I, I was always like considered to be like the kid who was like good at math, but I didn't actually start contests until uh, like third or fourth grade. And when I got into contest math, it was just like very mag magnetic. And I just like, uh, I just could not stop myself from doing it. Like, I would just, like, go online and look up, like, AMC 8 questions. And eventually, like, the harder AMC and Amy questions. Uh, and then I would just do those. Uh, and it's been kind of an experience seeing myself, like, kind of grow up with contest math. Like, the first time I saw an AMC 10, like, test, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so hard. Uh, but eventually, you know, yeah, you kind of feel yourself as that. Yeah, I got, like... For me, it was, I guess, a bit different because I was always homeschooled. So I didn't have like the, oh, I, you know, the teacher said I was the best one in the class at math or something. I, I didn't have that, but I definitely had like a lot of math skill. And so I like I, I developed with books. And uh, at, one thing that was notably helpful for me was when I was uh, younger, I was attending the uh, math circle at a nearby university, the University of Texas at Arlington, which was like a place where I learned a lot of neat stuff. And that was one of the factors in my 
math contest development math learning <laughs> yeah i guess yeah. like um like like what isabella said i guess contrasting to what isabella said actually i was never the best person in my middle school i was like at the, at the end of eighth grade I, I was consistently second best but i was never the best um and i guess my math count story was basically like i didn't do it in sixth grade and in seventh grade i also didn't want to do it until my math teacher was like you should do math counts and then uh, he threatened to tell my parents to join math counts if I didn't join math counts. So it I was like, like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, you know, uh, but yeah, uh, I did. So, so I didn't attend the first meet actually. And then he was like, you better attend the next meet. So I did. And then, yeah, that's how I got started. Yeah. I, I also think that finding like a good math community is like a really big part of like uh, starting and maintaining like an interest in math uh, and like and then also like there's like the AMC series but then I've I heard about a lot of other contests like both local and national through just like people in my area yeah I definitely agree about the community thing if it weren't for the other people from my school or the people I met through math camps or even my math teacher from seventh grade I would not be where I am now yeah community is definitely you know it, it can definitely be very very nice to have like other people to to do math, to, to talk about math with, um, be it in person or on the internet. So our second question is from Saksham, who asked, how did you manage studying contest math concurrently with schoolwork? Did you have enough time? I would say I did have enough time. Um, but it I, I guess it's like, it's definitely like not a very easy process with juggling schoolwork. Uh, in my, uh, I guess like the big time factors were figuring out which classes like were draining my time and then just trying to like figure out ways to not let that. So hmm. I guess for example, like my history classes in ninth and 10th grade were like the biggest time waster. So I would try to like do those assignments during class. Um, and then just like, uh, and then as soon as I got home, I could spent all the time I wanted on math. Yeah, so I guess I, I did a sim similar thing in high school. So uh, I guess the main difference is I didn't take weighted classes in subjects I didn't care for. So what I mean by this is I never took things like AP government or AP US history. I always took the regular versions of those classes because they had much less coursework. And as a result, I was able to have more time to spend on things that I really wanted to do like math. I guess that's fair, but like for some people, they really care about like the AP or like IB or similarly advanced classes. Um, so I guess if you must take the weighted class, oh, I mean, for me, I didn't. I tried to avoid all of those like history, like social studies, as much as I could by taking them over the summer, for example. Uh, and then just like completely avoiding them, but uh, just uh, but time management is like a good part of it, I guess. And I guess I maybe don't have as much. On, on this topic as maybe Isabella and Holden do because I've been homeschooled. So I guess I've had probably somewhat more freedom in some aspects of this than other people. But but yeah, like uh, one, one thing I would add is like, you know, you can sometimes like think about math while doing other things. Like, you know, not to tell you to like, not to tell you to do other things half-heartedly or something, but like, you know, while you're, you know, like there's a there's a quote I've heard about you know doing thinking about things in the shower or like while you're on a run maybe or you know various like there are times you know when you can like think about math while maybe doing something else or something and so like if you you know thinking about math can be a thing I guess yeah, I guess yeah so it's fun. a way to get better like kind of passively. Like another thing that is is I think kind of important is you you need good time management skills which is. Uh, stated a lot, but it's worth emphasis again. Like, for example, I, I did a lot of my homework on the bus ride to and from school, or or maybe during lunch, or even during class. Pretend I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't even bother to hide it. Like, um, I, do not do this. Uh, I, I, I'm saying this with express purpose that you do not do this. Uh, in my seventh grade year, I would like I would actually skip my PE class, uh, partially because I was c completely unathletic, but also because, like, 
Uh, the teachers never noticed if I was missing, so I was just like hide in the. Hey, physical room education is important. Don't skip your PE classes, guys. Yeah. Be a yeah. Good okay. If, okay, yeah, be a good student. Do not, do not be me. But uh, I, I mean, I, I can't completely say I, I regret it. Okay, I better stop talking now before I like actually encourage people to like skip class. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, be a good student first and foremost, because like school is what takes up most of your time. So you should like be good at the thing that takes a lot of your time. I guess another thing. Uh, not, oh, wait, uh, yeah, do you want to go? Wait, actually, go holding. Yeah, I guess another thing like wait, worth uh, emphasizing <laughs> is uh, uh, a lot of people seem to focus on putting in hours of math and I feel like this is just not the right thing to focus on like I never I never counted the number of hours I did or made sure I did at least one hour of math a day right like I just worked on contest problems in my spare time some days maybe my schoolwork didn't allow me to do this or maybe some days I just had a lot of time to do it so I just did math whenever yeah the schoolwork is very volatile sometimes i will have like five assignments and like two tests to study for uh and then some days i'll like it, it's like a no homework night or something so like you can adjust your math uh math doing accordingly another thing is that like uh i think holden and i uh, uh both have kind of had experience with this but like math do like doing more math actually just like boosts like your more passive like problem solving skills which actually just lets you solve like the do worksheets and stuff a lot faster and and also like just and going back to what Holden said, like you you don't need to like like in general, like you don't need to like be tracking out how many hours you spent on math or whatever. But I mean if it helps you, you certainly can, but you don't like in general you don't need to just like, you know, do things that work for you. Okay, that should do it for today. Uh thank you so much for submitting your questions. If yours wasn't answered this time, stay tuned and we'll be answering more questions in later episodes as well. We'll see you next time.